Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text uh, is from our gospel reading from, from Matthew 20. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. This is our text. Dear friends, sisters, and brothers in Christ Jesus. All right, parents. And maybe those of you who remember your own childhood, if you're new here. I mean, kids might know this one too, right? I, I, this is the universal complaint of children. <laughs> See if you can, you can finish the sentence for me. It's not fair. Good, yeah. <laughs> it's not fair. What, what, did your, what did your parents say to that? Life's yeah, life's not fair, right? Um, I, uh, I can remember having this conversation, uh, not to pick on her, but I remember having this conversation with Sophie when she was about three. And Sophie's a very, Sophie's a very uh, has a well-developed sense of justice. And uh, when, uh, when I made that response to her, life's not fair, she said, yes, it is. <laughs> but as, as we grow up, we learn it's not, right? Um, and yet, right, it bothers us. It bothers us that, that life's not fair. Um, my parents, you know, my parents used to say to us about this, by the way. That they used to say, um, we, um, you know, we, she, they said, we, we, don't, we don't necessarily do exactly the same for each of you, but we give to each of you uh, what you need, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so, and, and it was also a point that, that we don't get what we deserve, right? We, we get what we, we need. But this, but it still bothers us, right? Uh, you know, when we, we look around and, you know, we wonder, well, well, why is my life not going as well as that person's life, right? And they seem to be terrible. And I'm, here I am having all these struggles and that person's doing so well, um, you know, this can infect the, the church, right? Uh, I, and, and, you know, and, and because I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's like the, the 2080 rule, right? You know, you have like 20% of the people who tend to, you know, kind of do everything. And, and you can look around and say, people say, well, you know, I'm doing my part. What about those other people there? Right? It's not. So today's gospel reading invites us to set aside our, our notions of fairness and to look instead at the, at the goodness of God. Uh, invites us to stop comparing ourselves to, to other people. Uh, that's what this is about. Uh, the, the message today in Jesus' parable, you might say, is, is something along the lines of this, right? Uh, don't compare. Don't despair. God's not fair. Right, that's what this is. This is what this is about. Uh, I mean, it's fun to preach this. I, I think um, very memorably, I got to hear uh, one of my mentors, uh, Dr. Jeff Gibbs, who is retired now from teaching at Concordia Seminary, but he preached at my ordination sermon, and I was in St. Louis having to do official stuff before I could be ordained, and I uh, was staying with Dr. Gibbs and and got to. It was there for this this Sunday, uh, and got to hear him preach this at, at his church, um, and so. There's, there's probably going to be a little bit of his interpretation of this because it's always stuck with me. Um, so let's look at this, uh, this is kind of the, the background of this. Like, like so many of the, the parables um, and, and so many of the stories in the gospel, this one begins with the disciples not quite getting it, right? I mean, you can just sort of assume that that's the case, right? And, and this actually follows, this parable follows the, um, the, the, the account of the rich young man, Right, the rich young man who comes to Jesus and says, "You know, what do I have to do to uh, inherit eternal life?" And you know, Jesus says, "Well, you know, keep the commandments." And he's and he's like, "I'm good. I've done all that. You know, what else do I have to do?" And and Jesus says, "What does he say?" Yeah, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor, right? Uh, And then, right, come follow me. And uh, and what does the guy do? He leaves, right? Yeah, he leaves. And he's sad because he has lots of stuff. And Jesus says, right, you know, how difficult it is for a wealthy person to enter the kingdom 
of heaven. And um, it's easier, right, for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. And, and the disciples say, well, who could be saved? And Jesus says, well, you know, with, with people it's not possible, but for God all things are possible. All right. Then Peter says, well, we've left everything to follow you. What are we going to get? See? And notice here, there's a change of focus, right? Jesus wants to talk about what God is doing, and Peter wants to talk about himself. And so Jesus actually affirms to them that, that they're going to be all right, right? That, that those who have who've given up homes and, and family, who've given up their, their lives to, to follow Jesus are, are not going to miss out, right? That they're going to be uh, abundantly compensated in the life of the world to come. But then he adds this at the end. He says, but many who are first will be last and the last will be first. Which, in other words, I, I think is a way of saying to the disciples, don't think that, that God is in your debt because you've been following me from the start. Right? Don't think that God is in your debt because you've been following me from the start. And then he tells this parable. Right? So that's, that's the background. All right, so here's the, the parable. This is one that, that you guys have probably heard many times. And, and the setup is, right, this, you've got this guy, right, he owns a vineyard, it's time for the harvest, he goes out to the market, to the place where, um, right, the, to hire some, some day laborers for his, his work. He gets there first thing in the morning, right, like, we're talking like 6 a.m., and he goes and he, he hires them um, for the day for a denarius, which in that time was, was a fair day's wage for a day's work. And so he hires them into his, his vineyard. Now here's a question before we get into this. What kind of person hires themselves out as a day laborer? Someone who's poor? Likely, yeah. yeah. What else? Unemployed. Uh, someone who's unemployed, right? Someone who, who needs money. Um, likely someone who, who doesn't have other, better job prospects right now, Right? So, so I want you to, to put yourself in, in this position of, like, of one of these laborers out there rehearsing in the morning and, and this guy right, rolls up in his truck, right, and he hires you, uh, he hires you to work um, a full day for a fair wage. How do you feel? You, yeah, you feel happy, right? You, right? You won the lottery, right? You get, to, you get to eat today. You feel great. All right, but now this is where the strange thing happens, right? The guy keeps coming back. He comes back at 9 o'clock and at noon and, and 3. And finally, he comes back an hour before closing. At 5 o'clock, he comes, and, and he keeps hiring people that are there, right? He hires them in, um, and, and they go. And then, right, and it's, it's payment time, and he has them lined up, and what does everybody get? They all get one denarius, right? They all get the same. And how, does, how, do, how do those guys feel now? It's not fair. It's not fair. And, and what's the, the master's response? I can, do, I can do what I want with my own money, right? And it's, it's what they agreed on. It's what they agreed on. Yeah, it's what they agreed on, what they were happy about, uh, but, now, but now they're upset, right? They're upset not because they were cheated, right? Not because he, he shorted them, um, but because, because other people got something good, Right? And, and so our, our first lesson here, right, is, is don't, don't compare, right, don't compare. And this is something that, that Dr. Gibbs liked to say, is, right, comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. Um, you know, so often, and this is just natural human behavior, we tend to, to try to, to judge how we're doing by looking at other people and, and comparing our lives to theirs, Right? Um, 
we compare ourselves to our peers, we compare ourselves to our neighbors, we compare ourselves to the person sitting next to us uh, in the pew. We compare ourselves to pe people on social media, which is super, super pernicious, right? Um, and, and we do that and we look at them and say, well, yeah, compared to that person, I'm doing okay. Or maybe we're like, man, that person has their life all together. What is wrong with me? It's, it's interesting here, um, when, when the, the master says uh, to the, uh, when he, sa he says to the, the workers, he says, do you begrudge my generosity? That it, in Greek, what he literally says, and some of your translations might note this at the bottom, what he literally says is, is your eye evil because I am good? Is your eye evil because I am good, right? So you, the, the idea is that, that this jealousy, right, is, is kind of, you know, comes from an evil eye that looks at these things badly. Um, and comparing tends to lead to that kind of evil eye, right? And it does so in part because we're looking at the wrong place, right? The workers become upset when they start uh, looking at their fellow workers and stop looking at, at the goodness and generosity of the master, And by the same token, right, if I'm, if I'm looking at you and comparing myself to you, it means I'm taking my eyes off of the good that God has done for me. Don't compare. Don't take your eyes off of the master because God has done great things for you. God has called you into his family. He has made you his children. He has, he has called you into his service. He has called you. He has given you a purpose he has, he has given you the promise of everlasting life. And there's nothing better than that. So don't compare. By the same token, don't despair. Right? How did those, those other guys, those guys who were still there at 5 o'clock, how did, how did they feel prior to having this guy show up? Yeah, they're out of luck. Right? How desperate do you have to be to still be like hanging out at the like day laborer pickup spot at 5 p.m., hoping that somebody's going to hire you for a little bit, right? And yet, he comes and he invites them and he, and he pays them the same, so they can eat, right? So they can eat, and that's what our God is like. He is. Our God is an 11th hour employer. He is an 11th hour employer who is, who is always, always calling people uh, to serve him. Um, and, and it doesn't matter what you've been doing up till now. Uh, it doesn't matter if you've, if you've squandered your life. Right? That's, that's, that's sad in itself. But it's not going to stop God. You know, he's not going to say, well, you had your chance. Sorry. No, right? He's always, he's always calling, and he offers the same salvation to all. Because the truth is, is that because that because God is not fair. If fair means that that we we get what we deserve, and thanks be to God for that, because Jesus got what we deserve on the cross. And so God gives us not according to what we deserve. He gives us according to his own goodness. So don't take your eyes off of him. Don't take your eyes off of his goodness. But rejoice that he has chosen you to work for him. Rejoice that he gives you life and he gives you purpose in this life. Rejoice that he gives you the hope of eternal life. Rejoice that he gives you not what you deserve, but he gives you what you need and so, so much more. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.